wanted to do a video regarding uh, how therapists that work in clinical mental health don't understand their own hocus pocus. And I call it hocus pocus because, as many know, the objective data that supports the efficacy of therapy, such as talk therapy, is really slim to none. Um, however, one therapist in, stands out particularly well in my mind. She was an older broad, and uh, she went to school late, uh, and she was a very... She was a man-hater, a feminist, if you will, but not a feminist like other feminists. Very old and very, uh, very Catholic, very Christian, and very judgmental of the clients. Uh, one particular client that we, her and I shared uh, was your typical goth chick. Uh, she was into BDSM and uh, all sorts of um, uh, interesting sexual behaviors. Now, what's interesting is the therapist did not try to find out the root cause of these interesting sexual behaviors, but immediately referred to her as a, quote, sexual pervert, uh, and demanded to that she understand that most of her problems, if not all of her problems, came from her uh, sexual uh, behaviors and her manner of dress, which, if anybody knows what gothic is, it's kind of like emo, except a little bit darker and uh, tasteful. But <laughs> but long story short, this woman who was a therapist, when I had to shadow people when I started, uh, I had to shadow her groups, and her groups were textbook to the letter. Uh, instead of running a group where the clients would participate in the group, she would stand up like a, uh, like a professor dictating what was and was not uh, appropriate uh, definitions of bipolar or uh, borderline or these other imaginary diseases of the mind that are really just symptoms. And uh, she believed her own nonsense, but she did not understand it, as is evidenced by, um, there was one inst instance where a, um, a young woman with a rare genetic disease that kept her from making enough collagen was suicidal because, well, she already had a shortened lifespan, her life was hell and everything else. And myself and my colleague that had the same job as me that will remain nameless, we used to have to sit in these employee meetings. And it was hilarious as this old broad goes, uh, she said she was going to kill herself, so I challenged her. She said she was going to hang herself from a tree, so I said, find a good branch. You don't want to break it. You don't want to, you want to make sure you die. Now, what's funny is right to this, the dude I call a racially confused Irishman who was a Freudian, uh, jumps in. Now, this guy, that guy was a big believer in challenging clients. Uh, now, anybody that's dealt with suicidal clients knows you do not challenge somebody and then let them out of the office. But he comes in and he goes, oh, that's good. You challenged her. Challenging them is how you get them to admit that they're not really into this. They're not, they won't do it if you challenge them. Now, again, this shows a lack of understanding of the suicidal person's behavior and a lack of evidence, a lack of understanding of the data of suicides. Uh, now, what's <laughs> very humorous is the big thing was like the racially confused Irishman. Uh, his thing was, well, you got her to sign a, uh, you know, a, an agreement, a non, uh, you know, she's not going to hurt herself agreement. What's that called? A safety pact or some crap like that, which they had us do all the time. Now, what's funny is Prior to working in the, the field that I did, I was a van driver for the same clinical mental health, uh, clinical mental health clinic. Uh, now, what was funny is the same thing, these safety contracts or contracts for safety. Nobody wanted to hear me explain that making a safety contract with somebody that is clinically insane will not hold water in the court of law. And if somebody is openly suicidal and they've said they're suicidal, and you get them to sign a piece of paper saying they're magically not suicidal after they've confided in you that they are, this will not hold up in a court of law because the person was clinically insane. And you cannot get a person to, uh, for example, the, the definition of insanity is somebody that does not understand the uh, wrongness or outcomes of their behavior. That's the legal definition. That's why some people don't get prosecuted for murder, even though they commit a homicide, if they're clinically insane. They go to a nut ward instead of a prison. 
The problem is, uh, and when somebody is suicidal, they're clearly not sane because uh, I went through a citizen response course with the American Red Cross. The good Samaritan law states that as long as you do not uh, go beyond your uh, training, it is assumed by law that any person would choose without an anti-resuscitation clause to be resuscitated and brought back to life through CPR. So obviously when somebody is planning to kill themselves or saying they're going to kill themselves, they are not in what would be called a right state of mind. Long story short, what I'm trying to explain here is the therapists that uh, perform talk therapy generally speaking, and I've met many, of course, because I worked with them, do not understand the nature of what they're doing. Most of them just babble with the clients. Uh, in fact, I know this because, uh, for example, what I would have to do is they, I was put into an odd, uh, an odd circumstance because I used to have to help my clients identify the problems in their lives and how to overcome them. My job was not therapy. Unfortunately, that's what it became. Now, and that's the thing is cognitive behavioral therapy and other means of therapy are viable to some extent, not any real measurable result. And that's what's funny when you ask the therapist, because I did ask one of them, and they're like, well, it's quality of life. Well, you can't measure quality of life. And it's a lot of other fruity crap. But the thing is, if you're getting paid to do a job, you do a job. What I saw in clinical mental health is a lot of judgment a lot of vehement hatred towards people, particularly if the person, if the therapist or the supervisor was black, outright hatred toward non-blacks, but also just hatred of people that are poor, hatred of people that aren't necessarily uh, normal, hatred of the mentally retarded. That was a big one. I had one client that um, nobody would work with him because they were afraid of him because he was big and mentally challenged and did some time in prison for trying to uh, do some things to some people. Now, what's funny about that is he was big and scary and mentally challenged with an IQ of 55, but the dude needed help. And I worked with him. I didn't have a choice not to work with him, not that I would take that choice because I was being paid to help people. But the case management and the therapists, they did not wish to work with this man because they were afraid of him. Well, what the hell did they go to school for? What did they think they would be working with with the mentally ill and the mentally challenged? They're not going to be working with kindergartners.